I began to piece things together as I looked at this, thinking to myself, wow, you mean that when they go to blow this nation up here with a war with Russia, some kind of provocation that is done in order to cause Russia to strike the United States? Not to say that Putin is not well aware of this himself. Maybe he is, maybe he is not. Maybe he's only playing a part in this, or maybe he's just totally unaware and will attack the United States eventually anyway. Nonetheless, what's going to happen is they're going to move mass amounts of people to the Far East, to China. Maybe they'll fly them in through Europe. Maybe they'll come from the other direction as well. Maybe that's part of the Silk Road initiative to be able to fly them in, say, to Europe and then to take them by high-speed rail all the way into China, to these so-called ghost cities. In fact, I was shared with some uh, very interesting uh, friend of mine uh, that has connections in the intelligence community, not necessarily intelligence himself, uh, but has shared with me how that when the United States will be struck by war in the not so distant future, you can count on one thing, the elite and their families and all the support staff will be well protected underground. We know about that huge airport over there in, uh, uh, what is that? That's in Colorado Springs, right? Huge underground network there for the airport where people could be shuttled into there and then shuttled out of the country to safety. It looks like China is definitely going to be a major destination. And by the way, I think it's going to really surprise you when you find out some other things I'm going to share with you on this. You know, you have to go, as I said, though, to the Silk Road, that Silk Road initiative, which, by the way, they made it look like Xi Jinping was really the guy that inspired all of this. But in reality, Xi Jinping is not the inspiration for this huge, uh, massive uh, operation called the Silk Road or the rest or you know the, the rebuilding of this. It says here the Silk Road was established during the Han Dynasty beginning around 130 BC. Marketers and trade posts were strung along a loose uh, scheme of thoroughfares that ran from Greco-Roman metropolis of Antioch across the Syrian desert through modern-day Iraq and Iran to the former Chinese capital of uh, Shiwan and streamlining the transport of the livestock and grain, medicine, and, and science. In 2013, Xi Jinping, which is the current president of China, announced that the Silk Road would be reborn as the Belt and Road Initiative, the most uh, ambitious infrastructure project the world has ever known. Well, oddly enough, the money for that project has come heavily from Jewish backers or supposed Jewish backers, the Rothschilds, the families, these multi, what, billion, trillionaire type people that have been funding this. And the idea did not uh, start with Xi Jinping. It was actually a Hungarian man back in the mid 1800s, if I remember that right, I studied this once before, that actually uh, initially brought the idea forward. Now, from what I can see, though, is that they've been setting up to continue the Industrial Revolution that America once had and to continue this massive growth of wealth and income. But the thing is, is they know they have outlived that ability to do it in the United States. Well, after all, we had the trade unions, all that to try to bring better wages and better jobs for the poorer class. And that just doesn't work. Well, I think it works great. But unfortunately, uh, those wealthy business owners don't think it works. They don't like paying all that money out. They like communism better. In fact, recently, that's why one friend of mine, and I know he meant well when he said it, uh, as he spoke to me about China's involvement in Haifa and building the gas pipelines from Haifa going over to Greece and also to Northern Africa, the split right there, and how that it is going to be the West and the Israel that will be the big winners in this. Well, in reality, the West is not going to be the big winner. But the wealthy business, businessmen of the United States, they will be the big winners because they're the ones that have been investing in this pipeline. They are the ones that have been uh, making sure that the wars have been spearheaded to overthrow Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Sudan, as General Wesley Clark did say himself. Well, interesting, isn't it? gets more interesting though. I want to share with you some of those thoughts that I had on this. I thought about the death of America as it's put here in the trumpet called the death of American manufacturing, globalization and outsourcing are hammering our icons of industry. 
For over a half a century, American manufacturing has dominated the globe. It turned the tide in World War II and hastened the defeat of Nazi Germany. It subsequently helped rebuild Europe and Japan. It enabled the United States to outlast the Soviet Empire in the Cold War. And at the same time, it met all the material needs of the American people. That's very true. But now, well, we just got too much debt, I guess. During this period, many American icons were born. Companies like, notice the name, General Motors, Ford, Boeing, Maytag, Levi Strauss become household names. American manufacturing became synonymous with the quality of ingenuity. And on the back of this industrial output rose American middle class, high paying manufacturing jobs in turn helped spur a robust and growing economy that depended little on foreign nations for manufactured goods and armaments. Well, about the only thing keeping the United States going today, of course, is the military industrial complex. And that's the only people that we're really kind of uh, employing now. Yes, as Trump says, we can't turn our back on Saudi Arabia. They're one of our biggest customers. What you don't realize is that Saudi Arabia is the biggest customer because what they need is they are creating a more massive military over with Saudi Arabia to help police the entire world. Hmm, makes you wonder then. There's going to be a lot of beheading in the world because the Saudis will have a big police stake in the future military of the world. Not to mention, really and truly, all we're doing is we're making America great again on the blood of children and little babies and mothers and fathers that are trying to live a little peaceful life on some backside of a desert somewhere in the middle of nowhere where the life and luxuries that we have is nothing for them. And what little bit they do have is being crushed. As a new world order is taking over everything that they have. But I think it was interesting because as the article here in the Trumpet goes on to show you is how that we went from having a great robust economy here to suddenly those manufacturing jobs begin to go overseas. And they did during the Reagan years. And more and more big business owners moved over and moved over and moved over. Well, I had friends of mine that were actually uh, big owners in some of these types of companies. And yes, they are Jewish friends. And yes, a lot of Jewish people own big companies. And, but not just Jews either. There are some other wealthy businessmen out there that also moved their manufacturing companies overseas as well. But there was one thing that was interesting. I never will forget because I am an inventor. That is something I do. I've created many very interesting uh, products in my lifetime. One of those, though, was very detailed. It was made for moving very sensitive equipment. It was highly sophisticated. But to manufacture it in the United States, the very base cost was about $2,000 to manufacture this uh, smart design that I made that can move sensitive machines. Well, oddly enough, the very friend of mine that was interested, that owned a, and I won't call his name, but owned a very massive uh, company here in the United States, had the manufacturing portion of his company over in China. And he said to me, he said, Steve, he says, we can market this item. It will be a very big ticket item. But the thing is, is the cost of manufacturing such a technical device, although America could make it much better, we need to save money and send it over to China. Well, I refused. I said, why do we need to send it to China when we need jobs in America? And I said, at the very least, I would send it to Israel so that our people in Israel also can benefit from the production of this particular device. Then they turned me down as a result. I've had several things that I've invented. All of them would have been very successful, but I always wanted it either built in America or built in Israel. In every case, I was turned down because they wanted these things all manufactured in China. Now, getting to my point here, I began to realize the moving of American manufacturing over to China was done intentionally. That's what funded these cities. By sending all of the businesses over there, all the manufacturing jobs over to China, and the fact that now China was making it for pennies on the dollar compared to what we did in these poor Chinese sweatshops, where these poor Chinese people under communist regime who cannot kick back, cannot complain, will not have unions, will not make multi-millions, and will not live in big fancy houses. The profits, though, were being used to make those cities, to make these ghost cities, and what for? 
because they know that the ultimate plan is to bring down the United States and they wanted a place for their children, the elite at that time, in the future, the government, all that that would be lost in America to be able to move to the new headquarters of a new world order. Now, I'm not saying that China would be the new headquarters, quote unquote, per se, but China will be the leading industrial nation at that time. And by moving all of the industry over to China and by having everything so much cheaper, but yet we still pay the same price for the car. We still make some cars here, but we still pay a high, not only that, we pay a higher price for the car than we did back in the 80s. Everything is more expensive. It didn't matter that the manufacturers have moved to China. We pay any much more money anyway. But what were they doing? They were taking the profits that they were making, massive amounts of profits, and they were investing it, building all these future cities here for the people that they're going to save during the depopulation agenda that's going to happen in the United States, possibly Canada as well. My friends, you there, and maybe even in Europe, maybe they're going to take you guys out as well. Maybe it's going to be a free-for-all for Russia, Western in Europe, they have to think about why they're moving all the refugees into Europe and why they're moving all the refugees now into the United States. You know, I was told, and this is sad to say, but I was told that not only are they going to destroy this nation, but they plan on genociding. A racial genocide, no less. You don't think that some of these elite care about the color of your skin? They do. Sadly enough, they do. And I think that's a shame, but I want to share more. It doesn't end there. Let me show you some interesting things. Teach your kids Mandarin, the Jared and Ivanka way, for $75,000 and up a year. As I said to you, if you remembered, President Trump's grandchildren are learning Mandarin. And in fact, when we went to go see about enrolling our son into high school, we were surprised to find out that Chinese is now the, one of the main languages to be learned in high school four-year course. You're kidding me. It used to be French or Spanish. Now listen, I'm not against the idea of learning Chinese. Great thing. Yes, there is a lot of business between the United States and China, but when you realize there's an agenda behind it, then you understand why they're doing what they're doing. All right? But it doesn't end there. Of course, China, uh, President Trump, uh, Ivanka Trump's five-year-old daughter, Arbella Kushner, serenaded visiting Chinese President Xi Jinping with a Mandarin folk song earlier this month. It prompted an outpouring of affection from many in China. In America, it probably prompted at least a little envy among other parents of young Mandarin learners. President Donald Trump may be known for his treats to knock China down and peg or two, but his grandchildren are part of a growing desire among American families to help their kids take advantage of China global rise with Mandarin skills. It is a global elitist plan. What President Trump is doing is only a charade. And unfortunately, many of us are just gullible enough to believe the charade. But, like I said, it gets more interesting. I ran across this book here, Chapter 9 is called Israel and the Jewish People in Chinese Cyberspace in 2002. And you want to keep the date in, in close in mind as I speak about this. It's uh, Zhang Ping, 